call this meeting of the AMATS Policy Committee to order. We run out of time at 1 p.m. on, on uh, June 28th. Uh, Craig, would you like to make the public involvement task? Yes, all AMATS meetings are public meetings. The public is invited to comment. If we have a business item, we will have a presentation by, in this case, staff, uh, and then the committee will be given an opportunity to discuss it. At that point, the public will then be given an opportunity to comment when the matter rests back before the committee and they're having their deliberations. <coughs> It'll be before you, and we'll be, we can do that for every uh, business item. Okay, thank you. Uh, approval of the agenda. Are there any changes from staff? Can we have a quick roll call for the Oh, sure. Oh, Mr. Burke? Thank you. Here. Mr. Flynn? Present. Mayor? Here. Uh, Jennifer Witt, uh, acting for Rob Campbell? Here. Alice Edwards here for DEC. Thank you. Thanks. Any changes to the agenda? Move to approve the agenda. Second. Anybody opposed? No, no move. Approval of the minutes from May 3rd, 2012, and this is a pretty substantial set because of the importance of the activities that were undertaken. Our, um, and thank you for getting this turned back around. Um, did anybody have any recommendations for changes to that? I just comment, Madam Chair, that I thought uh, it was an excellent job. I read through them today and, and thought it did a very uh, thorough and excellent representation of what took place, and I have no amendments. So with that, I'll, I'll move approval. Second. Any discussion? Anybody opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. Business items, 5A. Uh, tip amendment number three, Mr. Lyon? Yes, Madam Chair, this is an amendment that's been uh, running through the system for a little while. We got most of the way through and then uh, realized we had additional allocation that we needed to to reflect in our tip and so if you look at the, the actual tip which is the legal size document it has a lot of red in it because a lot of the numbers changed uh, and uh, so we reflected some additional obligations uh, a few new projects the memo itself that's labeled 5a should have all the new projects and the specific dollar figures it has a breakdown of what the old number was and what the new number is so all of those uh, that information is before you for the most part, there's nothing earth shattering. Um, I could go through each and every change, but uh, the memo is there reflecting all of the changes. Do you, do you not have it? I didn't have it, but I think Mr. Birch and I are sharing one. I did read through it previously, and I'll have a few questions. Okay, and just uh, for, for uh, the information and benefit of the Policy Committee. We also have visiting with us today Mike Vicu from our DOT headquarters office. He is our Chief of Program uh, Development in, in Juneau. And uh, I think one of the things that precipitated this amendment initially was that the allocation for AMATS had increased based on new funding levels established through the Statewide Transportation Improvement Program. And so if there's any statewide questions, we also have the benefit of uh, Mr. Vicu's presence here. As well as Chris Riesenberg is on the phone too from HWA. Yes, he is online. Okay, do you want to hit the highlights or? Well, I can I can just real quickly hit the highlights program by program. Um, we updated uh, the HSIP program, which is Table Two, and that again is the Highway Safety Improvement Program. That's a program that is administered by DOT. Because it is federal funds, we have to reflect it in our tip, but it's not part of our allocation that the policy committee and the technical committee get to weigh in on but it uh, but it has to be in our tip because it's federal funding table three roadway program uh, for the most part just updating some of the numbers uh, we did add uh, we, well, we revised this Bernard Road rehab project to reflect the language that was uh, modified in the MTP if you remember when we discussed the MTP the assembly we said instead of prescribing two lane, four lane, or three lane, or whatever it is to say, modify to improve traffic flow. So we showed that language change in the tip here. Um, we also added four new projects, the South Anchorage Hillside Intersection Study, the Driftwood Bay Drive Study, a regional household travel survey. Uh, that, that survey would be used to, uh, to inform our transportation improvement model, I mean our transcab model. 
and also the freight mobility study. We did a freight mobility study, I think in 2001, might be 2002 before I started, and so we're updating it. It's obviously about time to uh, re revisit that. So that's table three. Um, table four, we just updated some of the numbers to reflect uh, additional allocation and uh, just some uh, schedule changes. Table five, uh, again, uh, same sort of thing, just updating some of the numbers. We added some more money into the traffic control signalization project because just it reflects the rising cost of doing business. So we showed that in there. Table six, uh, table six is the national highway system. Uh, and that again is a project, a program that is uh, administered by DOT. And because it's federal funds, it needs to be shown in our tip, although it is not part of the allocation that AMAS decides on the prioritization of. So the table six is in there with some new projects and some, uh, some big differences in what's happening with sewer highway projects there. No changes in table seven. Uh, table eight, updating some of the numbers there, the Kinnick Arm project and the recreational trails for Alaska project. Three new projects. These, uh, the first and third new project in there, the People Mover Maintenance Facility Roof Replacement and the People Mover Veterans Transportation Community Living Initiative. Those are projects that we talked about fairly recently where we had administrative modification. Those are projects where uh, the Public Transportation Department was able to uh, get some earmarks or grants, and because they're federal, we need to reflect them in there. And then that traffic congestion relief is. Uh, project that was in the state grant funding. So they need to be, they, we showed them in there as part of that table eight. Table nine, sort of the same thing, just uh, showing some uh, changes in uh, project amounts and phasing. And then there are, it says six new projects there. Table nine would be national highway system and non-national highway system projects outside of the AMATS area, but within MOA. If you remember the AMATS boundary stops at Potter Marsh. So everything south of there is still within the municipality of Anchorage, but it's outside the AMATS boundary. So reflect those as well. And uh, just a little update in Table 10, which is the payment replacement program. Just uh, freshen up the language on where the project was actually located. The payment replacement program is shown in Table 3. In, let's see what project number is it. Off the top of my head. Well, that's right. It's not shown as a number. It's after the grandfathered ones, but it's not shown as a number. It's just the one right after that. So we have a separate table in the back that shows all the projects we're going to do, and then we have a pavement replacement allocation in our Table 3 based on uh, the policies and procedures that we adopted that said we'll take a percentage of our total allocation that devoted to pavement replacement. So those are all the changes in the TIP. It went through the Technical Advisory Committee and the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Anchorage Assembly, and all, they all recommended approval of those changes. So it is here before you today, uh, hopefully to approve that. In addition, we did have uh, the Air Quality Conformity Consultation Team get together and discuss the uh, conformity analysis, and they agreed that this was conforming. There weren't any new projects that were added that will make us in the, not in compliance. So I guess that would be the first thing that we would want to try and adopt is the conformity analysis, showing that it's acceptable. Um, it, I don't have, there was just an email that was sent around on that. There's not an actual separate document. Uh, because what, 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 they, what they basically, what the consultation team basically said was the existing analysis uh, uh, is still in force and works just fine because none of the new projects require a separate conformity analysis. So that was the language that went around on that. Okay, are there questions? Of you said a question on a pavement replacement. <clears throat> is this, this is basically, um, I, I just, I'm zeroing in on this because I had a call from somebody on a local road that was concerned about uh, uh, Chip seal versus pavement, uh, but but when you look at a, a pavement replacement project, is it, is it straight up full full pavement? I mean, just like we see where they grind out the, the, the asphalt and 
and lay it down again? Is that, is that what we're talking uh, about here? Typically, yes. And, and I know there's been some interest um, from our headquarters office to look at more of chip seal as, in, as a, a preventive maintenance and extending life of some low volume roads. But typically when it's the arterial system yeah. or collector system, uh, there's a determination made in design whether it's going to be grinding it down and repaving it or uh, doing an, a, a pre-level to get rid of the ruts and then paving over. So, okay. but it's typically a full pavement full design. Yeah. Yes, okay. it, when we do it with federal funds under this yeah. program. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you, Madam Chair. A couple questions regarding pages. <clears throat> I think we're on page uh, number four. But table three and table four. Mm -hmm. um, as I recall, we had just paid off our credit card, so to speak, and we're not using the advanced construction funds to run our program, and now it's reappearing. We have a little bit of discussion about why we're now doing that. That's pretty, I mean, pretty significant numbers. We've got uh, eight million in this year for the Pete River Road. Um, so that's 18 million, isn't it? And 16 million for O'Malley and and uh, 800,000, from Muldoon. I'm just, I'm just curious why the decision was made to move back into the advanced construction market. Mr. Lane, would you like to take that on? Well, I'm not. Uh, you know, this was. Those are the state projects, and uh, I'm not certain why. That's exactly why. Part decided to write it in like that, but I, I can address that yeah, then, if you will. Yeah, be my helpful. staff had yeah. the uh, you, you were right when it came to FY12, we were pretty much starting with a clean slate, and um, the uh, what we're looking at primarily is the fact that we're ready to go to construction with these larger projects is that they exceed what we receive in any given year and it uh, requires them looking at advancing funds from the following year to make to be able to advertise them basically um, the uh, one of the things too um, as part of this amendment we fully funded Diamond Boulevard as a pavement project. And if that one had not been fully funded, then we would have been taking, we would have adjusted the, the dollars for the Eagle River Road. And I can tell you just from a, a, a practical standpoint, working with either the STIP or the, the AMAX TIP, there's a lot to be said about having some AC, um, some money that's AC because one, if you have a slip late in the year, you're not at risk of leaving any money on the table, so to speak, because then what you can do is fully fund a project and not borrow it for next year. So it gives you some funding flexibility. Um, because at this time of year, I can tell you that typically what we're concerned about is getting the entire program obligated. And if you have any project, if, if we were perfectly balanced in FY12, um, if, for example, we had fully funded Eagle River Road at $26 million in FY12, and it slipped. We would have nothing else really to step in and fill it. So as it is, if it don't get me wrong, we, we do plan on allocating uh, Eagle River Road. That, but that, that's what it is. By the time we're moving to construction with these larger projects that have been in development for many years, they exceed immense's mm -hmm. allocation. Well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to. You know, we can make any changes there. I'm just a little. The, the, the volume of advanced construction is pretty significant. You know, uh, AMET's allocation is what, in a 30 some odd million annual range, and we've <coughs> basically taken half of it out of 13 for 12, and half of it out of 14 for 13, and another chunk. Uh, somehow we're moving from 12 back to 11 <laughs> in Table 4. I'm just a little nervous about the level of advanced construction that we're obligating here. We'll, we'll just keep that, I guess, for the right answer. Um, if I may continue, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, moving ahead to table 
eight. Um, does Mr. Lyon, are these all other fund sources, basically, or are not AMATS funds? These are not the AMATS allocation. These are not the financially constrained portions of the table three, four, and five. Okay. Uh, and then, so I, I specifically have a question about Project Six. The Mr. Cars here, <laughs> the uh, C Street Railroad bypass. I'm, you know, we have now got this thing what out in the middle of nowhere for funding, and this is <clears throat> what the third busiest north south uh, automotive route in Anchorage, and we're by this amendment. Um, making it even more oblique if we'll ever fund this. Uh, this happens to be adjacent to the uh, QAP aggregate facility, which means aside from the 8,000 foot Whittier trains and the 4,000 foot gravel trains going to ASG and the passenger trains going to Point South also means multiple movements back and forth across that crossing, blocking the third busiest arterial north south in Anchorage. I'm 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 bothered by the deletion here. I think it's uh, imperative that we put a little more emphasis on the importance of this project. Well, back to Table Three. I mean, it's listed under Project Eight, and it says 2015. Or beyond, you're right, it's beyond, but it's 23, $23 million. In, in fantasy money, right. Yeah. <laughs> so at least it's, it's, it's on the list. I, I appreciate that. And, and I, you know, this is not my part of town, but um, you get calls, we get calls. It's, it, I'm, I would prefer to, and I'll make the motion, Madam Chair, to amend Project 6 to, I guess, delete the deletion. Okay, okay, right now we don't have the, we're still just on the discussion part, correct? We, we, we don't have motion. a, a motion. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll wait. And if, but let, uh, if I may, I would like to comment to this. That this change is precipitated by the need to match the description with what was in the actual earmark. The actual title of the earmark was C Street Railroad Bypass. It was not called the C Street Construction Phase 4. That's where we had uh, AMATS had originally identified it to go but th that's what this change is is just to make the title in table a project number six consistent with the actual earmark well with all due respect to yourself and to our distinguished dot yes that's because originally this project was conceived as part of a bond proposal a state bond proposal and the money was uh, <clears throat> reallocated to the c street project and that's why i think the language is where it was, but I'll, I'll leave that be for now. Okay, <coughs> Mr. Lane, do you have anything else to add to that change? Nope. That uh, that particular change, I think it's exactly what you said, just the change to match the earmark. Are there any other comments? Can I ask for Mr. Carr to speak on this? He's, he, sure. He knows uh, this better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually part of the FHWA earmark that came in in Safety Lou FY05, I believe it was. Um, the associate administrator for the Federal Railroad Administration was up on the lead engine of one of our trains going south um, and statement a little bit in context she was appalled at, at what she saw at that crossing so I appreciate your support there um, this one of the issues I want to talk to Mike about we we're looking at some way of moving something forward for C Street the big issue as you noted is is the third busiest corridor um, in Anchorage um, we're working on a scope of work that has virtual messaging, virtual messaging system where we would actually communicate between those systems and the train uh, to tell war, um, uh, commuters when the train is arriving. Those uh, signs would be at Diamond, International, Tudor, and Raspberry. That's the conceptual scope of the project. Um, understanding that two million dollars is probably not going to fund the design of the uh, grade separation there this has been hanging around for five years we, we, we got to do something about that particular intersection I, I'd love to see a grade separated but everyone seems to be um, reluctant to move that project forward 
So in the meantime, we have all these 35, 40,000 commuters a day going up and down that uh, particular corridor, whatever the number is, uh, that we need to do something about. And we're hoping this BMS uh, scope of work would be um, accepted and we can move forward and do something with it. I just wonder if, uh, if there's any additional discussion regarding the clarification uh, mat the match to the earmark, or did you drop that? Well, the the there was state funding in the 2004 geo bond, 2002. Which was it? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. I'm struggling for yesterday, so I, 2002 <laughs> is about that. There, there was a lot going back and forth there, Pat. That I, I frankly don't remember. Yeah, it but it, it was state funding for a uh, great separation of the geo bond that was passed, transportation geo bond. And unfortunately, the language of that bond was kind of the, the dollars were fungible in that if a, if a project couldn't be completed, the dollars could be moved elsewhere, and those dollars were moved elsewhere to augment the C Street extension to uh, to uh, O'Malley. I to call that, but I'll just put it forward and let you know. Yeah, by all means, if I'm wrong, I'd be glad to know it, but uh, I, I can dig in my files and find it for you if you want. <laughs> Any further discussion before we open it up to the audience? Well, just I mean, it sounds like, Madam you know, Chair, that this is just a technical change that matches, uh, like you said, trying to match up with the uh, earmark language. So, your motion is to leave it the way it is. Um, uh, I, there, I haven't made the motion. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Until you make a motion, I'll hold on. Okay. okay. Anybody from the audience here would like to? Ask questions or have comments? Okay, I'll bring it back to the committee. Uh, entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the uh, tip amendment, number three. That's it. Madam Chair, could we do the air quality conformity oh, first? Sorry, first. Yeah, if you could. Absolutely not, Madam Chair. <laughs> I'll move the air, conform air quality conformity. Uh, analysis first. Second. Any discussion? Anybody opposed? Okay, the, the determination air quality that air quality is these are met. Is passed. Okay, now for the tip itself. I'll move the tip amendment number three, Madam Chair. Okay, moved by Mr. Flynn. I'll second. Seconded by Ms. Edwards. Okay, discussion. Well, Madam Chair, I'll, if I may, uh, I'll, I'll not be too fussy about this, but I am uh, bothered by two aspects of this. One is I think we're being a little bit too aggressive for use of advanced construction funding. And uh, two, I, I think we need to be a little more <coughs> deliberate in our approach to how we're going to handle the C Street at grade crossing of the railroad. We need to just keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And this this tip amendment does that further. Um, I would like to see the TAC uh, come back to us with a more concrete recommendation of how we're going to move forward. I think this virtual notification is a terrible idea, but if that's the best we can come up with, we'll take it. <laughs> um, and, but I would like to say a little more time spent. I don't know. I'll leave it Certainly, take notes, Mr. Lang. Okay. So, just to follow up on um, Mr. Flynn's comments, I'm sure. The, um, what is the uh, administration's goal on uh, on that particular crossing? I mean, uh, Mr. Flynn's absolutely right. This is, and, and Mr. Carr as well. This is you know, maybe the worst traffic jam in the entire Anchorage Bowl. And it happens every day. And is there, what's the game plan? Um, it is unfortunate that Mr. Campbell isn't here because he would much more uh, readily be able to address that. We'll I, I, know next it, meeting. Uh, I think that would be a good conversation to have next time. 
uh, it, it is, it, um, getting back to your point about aggressive use of AC, again, when, and I think what we're seeing is symptomatic of having these large projects that don't serve themselves well to breaking down into smaller ones. And this is one that doesn't do us any good to be able to have an interchange. Um, so, it, but it is something that, that uh, the TAC could be looking at and proposing a funding strategy or a partnership or something. I, I, I don't know, but I, I think part of it is um, uh, moving forward and, and completing the projects that have been underway for years, such as Dowling Road Extension through there, um, have been you know, a priority for the department and the AMATs. And now it's time to start looking. Well, I think what's next? Probably so darn expensive. It is expensive, but it's got to be done. And the, and the Dowling Road Extension was at one point had a, an alternative so that we could get great separation in the area and people would drop for expense reasons. So, I mean, we, we keep kicking the can down the road. This, so it, just, it just bothers me. So. Okay, right now we have a, a motion on the floor to approve the, the TIP amendment with some uh, recommendations. Mr. Flynn to staff and the technical committee to, to take another look at the C Street Railroad grade separation and to come up with some recommendations on how we may move forward. And that you'll ask Mr. Campbell about it next month. Yes, we will. <laughs> but she mentioned he may be gone then too. Yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll be in touch. If you happen to be in the chair again next morning, we'll know what happens. <laughs> Should have put it in ports, harbors, and road bond that uh, <laughs> yeah. somehow morphed into something. Yeah. Okay, no further discussion and no other amendments. Then uh, uh, all in favor of approving the tip? Aye. Uh, aye. 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 Okay, thank you. It is, it, it's passed. Okay, one thing that um, I mentioned to Craig prior to the meeting um, is that recognizing that it does take six to seven months to get a tip, a major tip amendment through the process before it can get to this committee. Um, I've asked him and staff to go ahead and start looking at, and the TUC will address as well, the possibility of amending the existing tip that we just modified to add the years 14 and 15, uh, recognizing that this will overlap with what staff will be undertaking to develop a brand new tip. Uh, the challenge we have is that um, in looking at um, we, we need to be looking ahead to make sure that we're gonna that we're on track to be able to deliver enough projects to meet whatever funding level there will be. And we're at a little bit of a we're hamstrung right now. We do have illustrative projects in here, but we do need to, to take a, a look. And so, if unless there's an objection from the board, I kind of like to get that put out there before staff and and the technical committee to start working on. Do you need an official motion, Madam Chair, or just from general assent that we do want to start looking forward to the, at least the 2015 time frame? I think a general assent would be would be fine. Is that fine? Yeah. Okay. We're short on projects. I know important to need some. You know, sometimes I thought we might need that. Sneaky transportation piece. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, moving right along. Next. Uh, operating agreement, item 5G. Mr. Lyon? Sure. Uh, so we have an operating agreement that was adopted in, I believe, 2001. And since that time, we've gone through a couple of uh, major changes, which uh, necessitate some relatively minor changes to this operating agreement. The, uh, the time frame in the in the old old uh, authorization bills was you update your tip and your MTP every three years now it's every four years uh, the uh, we used to always call it an LRTP long range transportation plan now it's an MTP so there are a lot of minor changes that we are uh, uh, we have before you today to clean up a lot of that stuff changing those three years to four years changing all the LRTPs to MTPs in addition since the last time we did this, we now have our freight advisory committee, and we have our uh, bike and pedestrian advisory committee. And so both of those creatures are now reflected in this. Uh, there are a lot of other changes. I could uh, go through each one, but again, they're pretty minor uh, housekeeping changes, nothing uh, too spectacular. Um, we did, I did send this to uh, the Municipal Department of Law for their quick review of it. They looked at it and said they 
they felt that there wasn't anything earth shattering there, and there certainly isn't anything that would require a redesignation. Uh, in other words, a redesignation meaning uh, a new agreement that needs to be signed by the governor and the mayor, and something that would mean we were we would fall under all the the newest guidelines uh, that were issued under safety lee safety lieu that say if you create a new MPO now here are the guidelines you have to follow so we're still under the old guidelines because uh, it's it's not a redesignation this this operating agreement uh, it specifically says if you look at page 22 it talks about amendments to the operating agreement it said uh, this agreement may be amended only in writing and must be required to undertake changes or work resulting therefrom or incurring additional costs etc etc said amendments are subject to approval by the AMS policy committee so and then the FHW and the FTA. You folks are the ones that would approve this amendment. In other words, we're amending it. We're making housekeeping changes. We're not doing a wholesale change that requires a redesignation. Uh, I do have one uh, item that that is uh, a, a minor change to what we're already changing uh, that, that was approved by the TAC, but we have some uh, scrubbing to do. And I pass out this single sheet here that you folks have before you. This relates to the makeup of the policy committee. Uh, the prior language just talked about the powers being on there, and it didn't. It, it said the, you know, the commissioner of DOT, the commissioner of DEC, the mayor, uh, and two assembly members. All of those other spots it talked about the commissioner of DOT or their designee. So it allowed, if the commissioner of DOT was not going to be here, in this case, the central region director has always been the uh, chair of the policy committee. That's the person who's always been here. The mayor couldn't make it, and the union manager has oftentimes filled in the designee. The two assembly members did not have that uh, language in there about the ability for them to have someone else fill in if they were out of town and couldn't make it, and the issue was important enough that they wanted someone to be here. So uh, we crafted some language. It went through the TAC. In looking at it just recently with staff, we thought, let's let's tighten it up a little bit more so it's pretty clear. So in this case, this piece of paper shows that we we added in, uh, it starts consisting of two anchorage assembly members or their alternates appointed by the assembly chair and so serving at his or her pleasure. That makes it clear that A, the assembly chair is the one who appoints the members to all the committees and then specifically the AMATS policy committee in this case. And the, and the chair of the assembly can also appoint designees so that uh, if you were not going to be able to be in town and there was something important like the MDP or a TIP amendment that you wanted to make sure the assembly's opinion was heard, you could have an alternate here and it was allowed in our office here. So that's what we tried to do with this language here. All of the other changes are in this red item here, this addendum sheet which we're going to ask you to adopt with this one amendment if someone could make that motion. So I'm happy to answer questions about all these creatures and we'll go from there. A discussion on the committee? Uh, I actually have a question. Uh, and specifically about the single piece of paper that, that augments uh, section 5.2 on page uh, number three of our packet, which is did, did the Department of Law review this with this specific understanding that a, signi a significant change to the AMATS operating agreement, to the AMATS policy committee membership uh, would could potentially trigger the new rules wherein the policy committee would have to be somewhat broader in its membership scope? The, the question was specifically asked uh, whether or not they felt this was would constitute a redesignation of the of the operating of the of the MPO basically, mm -hmm. and thus would trigger us to bring everything up up to up to the latest greatest. And the answer was they did not feel like this was a redesignation. I mean, it was it was all of the changes that are in there, save that you know those two lines in there, were the ones that they got mm -hmm. that they saw. They said <clears throat> does not look like it needs to be a redesignation. So basically, this is being presented to the committee as. Will it, and House a radish sheet to the existing agreement that the policy committee has the authority to approve. And, and Madam Chair, I know you know this, but for the benefit of the mayor and Mr. Birch, if we make significant changes to the operating agreement, it triggers a requirement that the uh, MPO 
operating agreement be brought up to this to the requirements of safety loop as opposed to T21 are we operating under? Mm -hmm. uh, and in that case, the membership of this committee would have to have be broadened significantly to include, for example, those rascals at the railroad, uh, I think the port, but I'm not sure, but, but a bunch of other entities. It wouldn't be this compact committee. It would be at least, what, 11 members? Somewhere around there, it's distinctly possible. Yeah. I mean, it, it says, it, the language specifically says, it talks about uh, major transit operators. So you have- it's Wilbur would be on board. Exactly. God help so us. You might have to have the uh, <laughs> public transportation <laughs> department on there. Uh, so, I, 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 that, so when I read this, I was just, the red flag went up and I just went, so it, Mr. Lyon, you're representing to us, this is simply, essentially a, a, a an addendum as opposed to a major amendment. And, right. And based on the assurance, I'm happy to support it. I just wanted to get that out for conversation before we move forward. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? Okay, so Mr. Lamb, what we have before us is the intent to replace the paragraph under section 5.2 with your sheet here so that we're just acting on the one document? That's my hope. Okay, I'll, anybody like to move that? So um, moves. Um, oh, so you need to move this creature first yes. and then amend it to amend the or, motion to add this? Or I think well, we, we move the amendment and then we'll move that as amended. I think we need this on the table first. Okay. You, could, you could put, I'm sorry. I you, you can put the whole document on the uh, table, right? Put, the, put a motion to approve the amendment with the modification laid on the table by staff. So moved. Got it. Second. What she said. <laughs> okay, okay, so we have a motion before us to approve the changes to the operating agreement um, that it has been recommended to be modified by staff with this sheet. So right. it's all one thing. And if I can just clarify the language I put down here where it says section 12.3, that is just for reference. That would not be included in the amendment. That is just because it references section 12.03 in the language up above. I wanted, in case anyone asked, what is exactly in section 12 here? So that was just for reference for you folks. That's not part of the amendment, or was not intended to be part of the amendment. Okay, any further discussion? I'm sure we have given the opportunity for public comment on this subject yet. We have, and nobody yes. jumped that. Thank you. Just want to clarify. Okay, anybody opposed to the changes? Okay, it's approved unanimously. Thank you. Okay, item 5C, OMAD's pedestrian or bicycle pedestrian advisory committee appointments. Yeah. Mr. Lyon or? Yeah, well, I'll get started on this. So, as you remember fairly recently, we had the bylaws for the bike and pedestrian committee come before this committee for approval and you folks approved it. And we then set about populating the committee. Uh, if you remember, we also had those, those uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, designated seats and four uh, public member seats. And uh, so the seven, the, the top designated seats there were ones where we actually contacted those organizations and either asked a specific person there to serve or asked them to have a name given to us so that we could populate this committee. And the four public seats down below, we uh, we solicited it through uh, our email blast. I believe we had it. Did we have an ad in the paper? No. But we did put it on our website asking folks, anyone who's interested in serving on this committee, we have these four public member seats, looking for a diverse uh, group of folks. We got 19 resumes and applications for those seats. And then there was a small subcommittee of uh, folks, staff from DOT and the municipality, get together and sorted those out and came to, to agreement on those four names that you see down below. So we now have a committee that we would like uh, to get started with. This uh, came before the TAC and they recommended the approval of those, those, uh, those members down there. And so we're asking you folks now for, uh, for their final approval. Any questions or discussions? Just staff? terrific. I read through. The, I mean, amazing group of people. Mm -hmm. So really well done, Erica. Hands Thank off. That's very nice. We're looking for those who use bicycles as 
transportation and they found it. Well, but I mean, just, 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 just the background. I mean, uh, this uh, Ms. Peterson, I mean, she has done this work in Tacoma. She's a you know, senior civil service officer at the military. I mean, that's, what, a, what a terrific uh, uh, slate of candidates. I'm just really impressed. So thank you. Any questions from those of intendants? Okay, we'll bring it back to the committee. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve. Second. Anybody opposed? Okay, it passes. Uh, note for the record that the mayor stepped out, so it was uh, four to four. zero. Okay, any other business? No other business. Informational reports. Uh, 6A, the Port Waterways Aviation Transportation Status. I understand this is a uh, recurring element of our public participation plan to have regular reports is that <coughs> every june we are supposed to have a port waterways and aviation transportation status update if we have new information to share with you uh, and so that's where we're at today today we have our port director uh, ready to uh, give us an update and uh, we don't have information from waterways and aviation they did not tell us that they had anything new in our shed and they wanted to share not that I'm sure what waterways exactly it is, but Ship Creek. It's a major uh, uh, got that part. Meter got that part. I don't I don't know who the representative is. <laughs> so Mr. Wilson is here to share the port uh, update. Hello everybody. Uh, my my report will be very short. I have just basically one thing to do. We're we're in a reset mode as you all know and uh, on the new project. And, the expansion area and we're making good progress on getting that uh, organized uh, more on that later but the uh, the predecessor to a lot of decision making has to be a, a good uh, planning framework and so we're doing a business plan followed by a master plan building on the business requirements uh, that uh, that are expressed by the by the private sector uh, over time the first uh, element is the business plan and that'll be probably completed uh, we, we expect by the end of this year and uh, meanwhile we'll start on some early elements of the master plan and uh, our our uh, expectation it'll cover all of the normal things that you have in the master plan including uh, inventory and literature search and and then uh, condition of facilities and, uh, and then a uh, facilities uh, plan and land use plan following that. So we'll have a, uh, a robust planning process going on and we'll be back to you with uh, periodic updates if you like. That's all I have for today. We're busy this summer. Let me say that. Very, uh, very good to see commerce is alive and well. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Are there any questions from the Committee or for the audience, Madam Chair, the uh, Assembly's Enterprise Oversight Committee uh, gave Mr. Wilson a semi-thorough <laughs> vetting process in the Assembly was unanimously approved his appointment. We welcome him aboard, and we know he's a big challenge in front of them. I had a question for you on the. Uh, I saw a presentation by uh, is it Ethan Shutt? Uh, at Siri on the on the wind farm, mm -hmm. I, are those are, is there, are they staging at the port? Uh, all those big parts and pieces that we saw, you, know, you had some pictures of them offloading. They're staged there, and then they what, they put them on a barge and move them up the island. Yeah, actually, they? part of the new expansion area is it has two barges, barge berths there already, okay. and they're in useful mode right now. And uh, so one of them's a dry barge, and the other one's a semi dry, and uh, the. The smaller one, the first one, is where they're uh, taking the uh, parts, the, the columns, the nacelles, and the, and, the, and the blades that are all stored there for the wind farm project on, uh, on Fire Island. And uh, they're uh, trucking them over to that barge berth in the far north end of the new area. And they've been staging everything, all the construction equipment and wires and, and uh, materials that they need. To, to basically do the infrastructure for the wind farm first, and that's been going on. And now, starting in about uh, one or two days, they'll be starting with a nonstop shipping of the actual parts and pieces. Okay. 
So that'll be uh, active through the through the end of this uh, season. Yeah, I figured you had a major role in that. I just wasn't exactly sure how the, the, no. the timing sequence. It's a windfall for us. Uh, we get you know morphage and we get we get some uh, uh, right. uh, temporary leasing of the of the space and so forth. So we're utilizing our, our land well. Uh, the other wind project, Eva Creek up in Fairbanks, is also storing their parts and pieces there, uh, at least some of the parts. And uh, they're actually leaving the, the port uh, on a daily basis in, in are they trucking those? Or three they trucks train? per train, train. Three trucks. going north. Three trucks. And so it's truly intermodal. So we, we really, uh, and, and they have, I don't know how many wheels on those trailers, it's, it's just a big operation. So Carlisle's doing that, and, and I saw one of the groups going out on Sunday, and it was uh, very interesting to see how they do that. We, we uh, are looking forward to other industrial partners coming and storing things over the winter, so uh, you'll see some other things happening, too. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Okay. Item 6B, deliverability concerns report. Do we have any concerns at this point? Apparently we have no concerns. Looks like all of the projects that we uh, have in the hopper to get obligated this year are still on schedule and on track to roll along. So nothing to report, which is a good thing. No news is good news. No news is good news. Committee comments. Uh, anything going around the room? Yeah, we do have to say. I enjoyed the both days of summer last week. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was here for him. <laughs> so, so what you did was help. <laughs> okay, other uh, AMATS meetings. Uh, looks like our next one is scheduled for July 26th. It's possible. Okay, and perhaps at that one we'll hear an update to the both the schedule of the new brand new tip as well as a tip amendment. Thanks. Get part uh, working with that. And the C Street project. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything else? Um, actually, not to put you on the spot, spot Mike, but uh, do you want to let folks know what's happening with reauthorization? Uh, you all turn into a turn up on the 30th, uh, but there has been actually uh, some movement this morning, and if uh, something might be just to, to frame some of the comments you're going to be hearing on the news, perhaps. So Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, what's happened uh, this morning is we've got a copy of the new reauthorization bill. It, it passed out of conference committee, I believe, last night. And um, it should be going to the Senate floor and House floor for an up or down vote either sometime today or tomorrow for the president to sign hopefully by Saturday, which is the end of the current extension. And I, may, I don't know if you're, Mike, if you're the right guy or Bruce, but is the railroad in or out? <laughs> Currently, the, the railroad, um, the FTA funding was restored for the railroad. Is it, is Just about. Just about. We, we, first of all, want to say thank you to the administration, especially Mayor Sullivan, for the expressions of support that we got. Um, we did not get everything restored, but we got a substantial portion of it restored. Um, we will have some impact on our capital program because not all of it got back. but. We, based on the numbers that we have been given by the conference committee staff, um, it appears that the cut was about 13 to 14 percent and not the 70 percent that we expected. So, so we went from a two thirds compromise to a 50 percent compromise? Uh, the, it's, it's very convoluted, Pat. Uh, it, it's 22.7 percent of a figure that is to be determined. You know, it, it just, we're, we're just still waiting for the final numbers to be crunched. So we might have to wait till the tables actually come out from FTA. But we thank you. It, it did certainly throughout the national support we got as well as the local support was very, very important and very effective. So, And the and net result of this bill, should it be signed, is that it extends the program through the end of FY13, so it's September 30th. So we're, Instead of being on a 30 to 90 day extension uh, schedule, it would be. Uh, give us some stability through the end of 2013, which probably indicates that Congress will have to begin reauthorization discussions next week in order to get one done for. Right. After so, this, so this is not a You're saying so, but the bill is actually good through September 30th, 2014. 
It was a 27 month bill. Oh, 2014. Yeah. It's a 27 month bill. Really? Yes, it does go through port, include 14. Oh, I didn't see that. Wow, two years. So, 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 so this is not a new safety loo. This is just safety loo extended, basically. No, it's a new. It's, a, it's a brand new bill. It's brand new. It's, it's, it's MAT 21. New. It's uh, officially called MAT 21. Um, I, and I'm sorry, I, I've just spent the last 12 hours pouring through the bill. So, uh, <laughs> it is a brand new bill. Uh, the, the framework was the Senate bill. But there's several changes that the House got in there. Some of the streamlining programs and some of the other things that they were looking for doesn't contain Keystone or coal, that, coal ash. So, but it is a transportation bill, or at least gives us 27 months worth of stability, which means probably about a year and a half from now we'll start all over again. Well, certain that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike. Bruce and I'm sorry, Chris. Chris, Chris Riesenberg from FHWA. Chris, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. That's not a problem. And at this point, it does not introduce new funding sources to the program, but it's it's subject to obligation limitation. It is expected to carry forward fairly consistent funding levels, although there are, are some consolidation of funding programs. And so it's yet to be seen how that's going to impact Alaska. Yeah, there'll be a period of transition. The Federal Highway Administration is going to have to get their arms around the bill and provide some guidance. So I think there'll be a lot of information coming out in the next two, three months as we, as we have a chance to read through all the pages and do some analysis of what exactly is in there. Well, Madam Chair, uh, and Chris, uh, if in a couple of months you can come visit us and give us a benefit of your wisdom, that'd probably be pretty helpful. Yep. Once we once we get our our feet underneath ourselves here, yeah, I've been pouring through the bill myself, also seeing what's there and what changes are. But yeah, I'll plan on doing that sometime because this this bill, as far as what I've seen, um, is a pretty big change on how we do business. It's it's heavily leaning toward performance management and that also is some of the stuff you worked on in the MTP um, should be applicable moving forward but then there's going to be some tweaks and changes in there um, but there's a lot of stuff that will have to roll down from our headquarters office some nationwide guidance and we'll have some nationwide performance measures that will be coming out and things along those lines. So yes, there'll there'll be a bunch of stuff coming out. But yeah, we can. I can definitely make a trip up there, and we can talk about this stuff sometime. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anything else uh, for the good of the order here? <clears throat> and we are adjourned. Thank you.